What's up and welcome to another episode of Gizmo Slip Tech. Today we're going to talk about the Razer Blade Pro with the GTX 1060 and 120 hertz IPS display. It's going to be freaking epic. Let's get started. So there are several things that stand out to me about this laptop. Number one and most importantly, and this applies for most of Razer products, but it's the build quality. This thing feels like a MacBook Pro put into PC form and it's classy, it's got nice lines, it's got a beautiful metal keyboard that is excellent for typing, and I even like this keyboard better than the mechanical keyboard on the Razer Blade 4K. This has the same excellent touchpad from the more expensive 4K model, and this is one of the nicest touchpads you can buy on a PC, hands down. So let's talk about the internals. This thing has an NVIDIA GTX 1060 graphics card, an i7 7700 HQ processor, it has 16 gigs of RAM, as well as two hard drive slots, a PCIe slot, as well as a two and a half inch drive slot. It comes with killer wireless, 1535 killer wireless is terrible. Plan on upgrading to an Intel wireless card. This also has a 120 hertz IPS display with 89% sRGB and 363 nits of brightness. And that's very good, though not quite as colorful as the 4K model with 100% sRGB coverage. So this version of the Razer Blade Pro does not have G-Sync, and some of you guys, that's gonna be a big deal breaker, but for me, that's a big positive, and let me explain why. G-Sync prevents you from being able to switch to the Intel integrated graphics card that comes with your processor. So with this Razer Blade Pro, even though it has a 70 watt hour instead of a 99 watt hour battery, it is going to get two to three times more battery life. G-Sync is fantastic in its own right, but it prevents laptops from having good battery life. And in a laptop, I would rather have better battery life than to suffer screen tearing, depending on the title. I guess screen tearing has never been that big of an issue for me. As far as battery life goes, you're gonna get one hour to one and a half hours. Maybe a little more if you run battery optimization through the NVIDIA experience panel. For general browsing and video watching through Netflix or YouTube, you're probably gonna get five to seven hours, depending on your brightness and the intensity of all the tasks that you're doing in the background. And for max battery life, if you're just, for example, typing in a Word document and nothing else is open, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth is off, you're probably gonna get eight to 10 hours of battery life. I think that's quite good, quite generous for a gaming laptop that is this powerful. The RGB lighting is fully customizable. Each key, in fact, can be changed and uh, you can set up different profiles for if you're in different games, different keys will light up. The RGB lighting is not as extreme as it is on Alienware MSI, but I do think the RGB lighting is quite a bit classier. Now, the storage memory in Wi-Fi is upgradable. It comes with a 256 gig SSD, as well as a two terabyte hard drive, 16 gigs of RAM, and a killer wireless 1535 wireless card. So I've got the Aorus open over here, the Razer Blade open right here. You can see right here we've got two PCIe NVMe, and we've got an M SATA right here, as well as two additional RAM slots. Now, the Aorus has two more underneath the keyboard. The Razer Blade Pro only has two here on the bottom. Easy access though. The big surprise here, the, the 2.5 inch terabyte drive here is not screwed in in any way. It's just sitting here loose. That was a big surprise. So I've actually upgraded the SSDs in this one up to a four terabyte SSD and a two terabyte PCIe NVMe. Now, as far as a memory, I haven't upgraded it, but it's easy to upgrade to 32 gigs if you're interested. I was able to play Overwatch on high with on average about 150 frames per second, occasionally dipping down below, but pretty consistently over 120 frames per second, which is right in the sweet spot for competitive gaming. I was also able to play PUBG at about 50 frames per second near cities or 80 to 90 frames per second in forests, sometimes spiking up as high as 120 frames per second or as low as 30, 40 frames per second when there was lots of things on the screen. So not the best performance in that game, but that game is not very optimized. Now, Razer has just come out with the Razer Core V2, which is a second edition of the Razer Core. It's an external GPU solution. I I already have a GTX 1080 Ti sitting around and I've ordered the Razer Core V2. I'll be doing a review of that when I get it in the mail. I can't wait to see how many frames per second I get in PUBG with the 1080 Ti. I think it will be quite fantastic. That Razer Core V2 should be fully compatible with this Razer Blade Pro and it is actually compatible with most 
laptops with a Thunderbolt 3 port. I'll be bringing you the review of the Razer Core V2 sometime in the near future. So that is a lot of positives about this laptop. What are the negatives? Well, some of the models that ship with the Razer Blade Pro are gonna have an AUO screen and an LG screen. So depending on which one you get, the AUO screens tend to have more backlight bleed. I personally got an AUO screen on this model and it does have backlight bleed, especially in the bottom left and bottom right. It's not terrible. It's not worth returning the laptop over in my opinion, but that's just my opinion. If you're very picky about that, it could bother you. Another bummer is that they didn't add RGB lighting for the exclamation point at symbol, all the secondary uses for the number keys, as well as the FN keys. That's not a deal breaker for me, but if it is for you, you should be aware of it. Another negative for this laptop is ghosting on the display when you play video games. This happens when you move very quickly, and it's because the screen has a slower response time because it's an IPS panel instead of a TN panel. With an IPS panel, you get better viewing angles, better color, better contrast. So that means deeper blacks, more whiter whites. It's a pro-con balance. Would you rather have a better response time or better color and contrast? And that's up to you to decide if you want a TN panel. There's plenty of displays out there on the laptop gaming market like the Oris lineup or the Alienware lineup. You gotta pick your poison. Would you rather have better color replication or better response time? And I think this comes down to whether you're more of a pure gamer or a pure creative, or a combination of the two. Last but not least, let's talk about where I think this laptop falls short. I think it could have a 1080p max Q, or at least a 1070 max Q in this laptop. If you don't know what a 1080 max Q is, it's almost as powerful as a full GTX 1080, but it's quite a bit more temperature efficient, allowing you to put it into thinner and lighter laptops without having to deal with throttling issues. Other than that, I think this laptop is fantastic. It is one of the best purchases in the gaming laptop market right now. If you're looking for something that's thin and light and it's still reasonably priced at $19.99, that's not a terrible price for something that has this high of build quality, incredible keyboard, incredible touchpad, and a, quite frankly, a quite excellent screen for both creating content as well as gaming, I really look forward to seeing how the laptops evolve with the new 8th gen Intel processors and the new Nvidia cards that'll be coming out in the next few months. But right now, I think this is my favorite gaming laptop. A link in the description if you're interested in picking one of these up. I'll have a link to the Razer store as well as the Amazon link. If you go through the Amazon link, that does help support the channel and I appreciate it. Again, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more future content. We'll see you next time. Brandon, out. Woo!